Hi, and welcome to another episode of Now in Android. This is episode number 12, which is really logical because last episode was episode number two. So let me explain what's going on. This is actually episode 12, and episode two was actually episode 11, and episode one was episode 10. I had been naming the articles according to their episode number for a while, and then I switched to dates, and then we started the videos, and they had their own numbers because they, it, it all got very confusing. So now the article says episode number 12. The video for that article says 12. The podcast also number 12. Or there's a conspiracy theory that, in fact, we do have episodes three through 11 in video and podcast form, but they were too dangerous to let out into the universe. You can take your pick. Anyway, on with the show. So lots of things happened in Android, of course, in the last couple of weeks. First of all, Android X releases. There were some stable releases that were basically bug fixes. So Fragments Library, the Media 2 Library, Navigation and Work Manager. There was also Core 1.2.0. Uh, had some interesting features and API changes in it. So you could check that out. That is now in stable. Including notifications, also making blend modes that were new in the Q release actually work on older releases through that magic compatibility thing. And shortcut info and also window insets. And then finally, view model save state. 2.2, this is a huge new release with functionality of really not much. Basically, this just changed the number so that it syncs up with the version numbers of the rest of Lifecycle. Kind of like I'm updating the numbers of these episodes so that the articles sync with the video and podcast. Same thing there. So 2.2.0 is the same as 1.0.0, but with different numbers. All right. Uh, also in the Android X uh, world, we have uh, hitting alpha for the first time is emoji 1.1.0. has some new emojis from Unicode emoji version 12 as well as 12.1. So if you want those new emojis in your app, this is a good way to get them. And navigation 2.3.0. This is interesting for a couple of reasons. One is there's a new artifact for navigation testing, which is important, obviously. Uh, and also there's new dynamic features navigation. So let me segue to the next section and we'll find out more about that. So. What is better than having a new API? How about having an existing API that does new things? So Wojtek Kalichinski and Ben Weiss have been working on functionality for navigation that will handle dynamic feature modules. So uh, essentially, you get to use the same navigation API where you navigate to things, but some of those things can be parts of your code that are not actually loaded, some of those parts of your application that are not yet installed. So a little bit of background. First of all, application bundles. Android app bundles is a new application bundling format that we came out with a few months ago. And it is the way that Android developers should be bundling and releasing their code. So instead of sending several API, APKs with different configura uh, configurations up to the Play Store, instead you send one app bundle up to the Play Store. And then the Play Store can then divide this into the subsections, the subsets of your functionality that is needed for any particular device and configuration that it needs to install that onto. At the same time, you can take advantage of a new feature the Play Store uh, and Play Libraries offer called Dynamic Feature Modules, where you can have that core module that gets installed initially that has all that core functionality that needs to be there when the app first launches. And then you can have other additive things, which are maybe optional flows for the application. They don't need to be there at first. Assets that aren't part of the initial flow, whatever it is. So you can make your initial download smaller and then download and install these other pieces as necessary. So there is a PlayCore library where you can handle the downloaded installation of these things manually yourself. Uh, and you can certainly check out that API. Basically, it's got callbacks. I'd like to do this thing. And then you get a callback later. And you can check the status of it and stuff like that. Or you could choose to use the new library that is in alpha form in navigation, where you can tell your application to navigate to this thing, and this thing may be in one of these uh, one of these feature modules. And uh, the navigation library, uh, the new API that's out there, will handle the details of actually downloading and installing that for you. If you want to check this out, uh, as I said, it's in alpha form, so maybe not ready for prime time for your application. Um, but they are looking for feedback on that, so please do check it out. There are docs for this, as well as a sample that just got posted last week. So the links for these, as well as everything that I talk about in these shows, uh, are in the article. So check out now in Android number 12. 
uh, to check out the details for those. There were a couple of interesting articles that you may want to take a look at. One was called Zero Cost Abstractions in Kotlin. This is part of Florina Montanescu's uh, series on Kotlin vocabulary. In this one, she talks about inline classes, uh, which you can use for type safety without all of the overhead that you would think is associated with creating classes. And also Android styling. There's a new series from Nick Butcher uh, called Android Styling. And this first episode in the series is called Themes versus Styles. And it goes over the differences between the two. From the outside, and frankly, even from the inside, they kind of look like the same thing, right? They both use style tags, so what's the difference there? They are pretty hugely different. You use them in very different situations, and uh, Nick covers a lot of the differences in this article. And there will be ongoing uh, future articles that add to this series and add to our knowledge of themes and styles. Um, a lot of the stuff from the article, but not all of it, um, comes from uh, a talk that Nick did with Chris Baines at ADS. So you should also check out that for good background and themes and styles. And finally, we had a new podcast for ADB, Android Developers Backstage. We talked with uh, Nike, uh, Mike Nakimovich from uh, Dropbox. He is working on a library uh, whose latest version is now in alpha stage. And he's working on this partially with the help of Yeet Boyar. And we talked to both of them on the podcast. So there's this pattern that we refer to in the uh, opinionated guide on architecture for Android called the repository pattern. So it goes like this. Let's say you need to store your data on device. Maybe you want to use the Room API in conjunction with the other architecture and components. But maybe you also need to occasionally retrieve data from the network. Wouldn't it be nice if your application didn't need to know about where that data was coming from, it could just call a single API, and then pieces underneath could determine whether it was coming from a local cache or coming from the network. That's the repository pattern. But we didn't implement the pattern. That is not a library that we offer. It's more of an idea of a library. You can think of the store library as an implementation of that idea. So they've taken a lot of, of those architectural design ideas and put them into an API so that you can now ask this library for that data, and the library will do the right thing uh, after you configure it in your code to actually reach the, the correct local and network pieces. So that is currently in alpha. Again, maybe not ready for prime time, but definitely worth checking out and also check out the podcast. And that's all we have for this time. If you like this video and other videos like it, please like and share and subscribe to the Android Developers channel. And I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.